Well, let's get some business news for you now. Kate Moody is here with us in the studio. And uh, Kate, uh, there's optimism that the world's two biggest economies will reach a trade deal as we inch ever closer to that deadline. That's exactly right, because this deadline has now been pushed aside. Uh, Donald Trump confirming that on Twitter on Sunday, saying he would not increase tariffs on March the 1st. That was the date on which the 90-day truce was due to expire. Teams of U.S. and Chinese negotiators completed a fourth round of discussions this weekend, although few details have been made public. Trump is expecting to meet with his Chinese counterpart Xi Jinping in the coming months to finalize the terms of what could be a breakthrough. So, what do we know so far? Naomi Lloyd has been taking a look. After months of negotiations, an end to the trade war between the world's two largest economies looks possible. But I told you how, uh, how well we did with our trade talks in China, and it looks like uh, they'll be coming back quickly again, and we're going to have a, uh, another summit. We're going to have a signing summit, which is even better. China's stock market surged by more than 5% on Monday, their best one-day gain in more than three years. After a weekend of negotiations where Trump said substantial progress had been made, reports suggest Beijing will agree to resume or increase purchases of U.S. agricultural goods. But U.S. negotiators say they're pushing for deeper changes to the country's industrial strategy and enforceable protections for American technology. Welcome news for U.S. businesses. State-owned enterprise reform, industrial policy changes are not items that can be changed overnight or would be reasonable to expect to be resolved in 90 days. So by finding a way where the two sides can come to some kind of agreement and then put these more challenging issues into a longer-term negotiating framework should have a very positive impact on the overall relationship. However, there is skepticism from China hawks in Washington unsure whether Trump will secure sufficient concrete concessions from Beijing. The president said that progress had been made on the issues of intellectual property, tech transfers, agriculture, currency and more. But specific details remain unclear, as does the possibility of how to enforce whatever deal is finally brokered. Those developments have broadly been welcomed by investors around the world. We saw big gains in Asia, which have somewhat carried over to Wall Street. Uh, the Dow Jones rising about 150 points this hour. The Nasdaq up just over half a percentage point. The rally has been somewhat tempered by a sharp drop in oil prices. They've dipped 3% after President Trump urged OPEC to increase its output. A more muted close in Europe, though still above the flat line. Uh, the DAX up just under half a percentage point. The CAC count about a third here in Paris. Now, the clock is also ticking down to another crucial deadline, March 29th, the day that the UK is set to leave the European Union. The British Parliament has yet to approve the terms of that exit, raising increasing concerns about a no-deal Brexit. The aerospace trade body ADS has become the latest to warn that the risks around that possibility are already causing damage and could turn into a, quote, full-blown economic crisis. The strong words follow a raft of increasingly dire warnings from business groups about the ongoing uncertainty. Banks have been rushing to transfer licenses or even offices to Europe to allow them to continue doing business post-Brexit. Meanwhile, the UK has signed a long-term deal with the US to cover derivatives trading after Brexit. The agreement will limit the disruption on a $500 trillion industry, most of which is traded in London and New York. The UK says it will continue to abide by the current rules, which were established by the EU even after it leaves the bloc. Banks, corporations and investment funds use derivatives to trade in the futures of currencies, commodities and interest rates. But a breakdown in that system could have a concrete impact on consumers, according to the head of the Bank of England. Derivatives can seem far removed from uh, the everyday concerns of households and businesses, uh, but they're essential. Uh, derivatives allow our pension funds and insurance companies to manage interest rate and inflation risks so that those safety nets can be there when we need them. Uh, they help our banks and building societies manage interest rate risks on loans and mortgages, lowering borrowing costs for uh, borrowers. Senegal is waiting for the formal results of this weekend's presidential election. Incumbent Macky Sall has already claimed victory and vowed to continue his so-called Emerging Senegal plan. Those reforms were the backbone, backbone rather, of his campaign, uh, aiming to strengthen the economy and improve infrastructure and education. Senegal is one of the fastest growing economies in Africa, with forecasts for GDP expansion hovering near 7 percent. Our reporter in Dakar, Nadia Massey, has been speaking to businessman Mustafa So about Senegal's prospects.
If you're looking at uh, seven years ago, uh, mainly economy was driven by services, which is banks and then um, uh, and insurance. Um, now, if you look at the uh, composition of the economies, like for example, agriculture um, has played a, a, a very uh, significant role uh, on the GDP growth, um, uh, investment also public investment, so as well as um, you know industrialization, uh, mainly the agri business. You know, which is uh, dictating that you know uh, the country is you know progressing uh, the way that it is expected by 2030 or 2020 uh, 2035 uh, what about uh, the oil industry do you envisage that being important for Senegal in the next couple of years when drilling is expected to begin no no obviously uh, uh, oil would, would play a significant role uh, in Senegalese economy um, I'm hoping that you know the fact that we have an existing economy uh, that is not depending on oil diversified you know um, I think when oil comes in that the you know the resource is is allocated in a way that the revenue generated by oil will be utilized to promote other resources unlike you know um, uh, avoiding to have the syndromes of many african countries you know that have 90% of the economy uh, depending on oil the world's leading mobile tech trade show has opened to the public with new products including folding screens and 5G connectivity hitting the market. But it's the political backdrop on the future of 5G networks that's casting a particularly long shadow, as Tatiana Nasser explains. Here at the Mobile World Congress in Barcelona, Chinese telecoms giant Huawei occupies the biggest booth in the exposition hall. Like industry rivals, its flagship offering for 2019 is a handset that folds out and comes ready to connect to 5G network technology. It boasts impressive speed. How fast? You know, the 5G, we download the one gigabyte movie in just three seconds. It also comes with an impressive price tag. The Mate X will retail for about 2,300 euros. And it's not alone. Samsung's latest offering also boasts a folding display and 5G connectivity at 2,000 euros. The global cell phone industry is pushing to boost consumer excitement amid slumping sales, as customers wait longer to replace their handsets in a saturated market. But that's not the only headwind facing Huawei. U.S. officials are at the conference, urging European network and Internet providers to shun the Chinese giant, who they consider a security risk that could enable state espionage by Beijing. Huawei denies those accusations and has its sights set on Europe as a key market. We're bringing the innovation, the technologies to our partner. We're bringing the benefits to our consumer. We're creating jobs. We comply. Huawei sold 206 million phones in 2018, overtaking Apple to become the world's second biggest smartphone seller and are currently at the forefront in launching 5G networks. Perhaps higher stakes than usual as that conference continues this week. All right, Kate, thank you very much indeed. Kate Moody there with the business. We're going to take a short break. Don't go away. Much more still to come.